Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. And welcome to this edition of The Porter Report. Now joining us is Gareth Porter. He is a historian and investigative journalist on U.S. foreign and military policy. He is the author of many books, including his latest, Manufactured Crisis, The Untold Story of the Iran Nuclear Scare. Thanks for joining us, Gareth. Thanks very much for having me again, Jessica. Good to be back. Great. So let's just get right into it. What, what are you actually working on? What's your latest piece about? Well, this past week, um, I published a piece that was a refutation of, uh, of a regular column by the Washington Post uh, so-called fact checker, Glenn Kessler, which was uh, his piece on uh, the idea that the uh, Obama administration has been remiss or has, has gone too far in expressing um, uh, at least the acceptance of the seriousness of the anti-nuclear fatwa issued by the supreme leader of Iran, uh, Ali Khamenei. And uh, Kessler uh, essentially relied almost entirely upon one source uh, for his uh, view of this issue, which was uh, a researcher at the uh, Washington Institute for Near East Policy, which is, of course, uh, clearly dedicated to the interests of Israel, um, and therefore not uh, precisely an objective source on the question of uh, the anti-nuclear fatwa of the Iranian supreme leader. Um, and, and this was a particularly striking example of how the news media in general, and the Washington Post in particular, is uh, slanting its coverage of the Iran nuclear issue to the extreme. Um, what, what Kessler did in this column, uh, which was published November 27th, was uh, essentially to make three arguments uh, against the serious, or taking seriously, the anti-nuclear fatwa uh, by the uh, Supreme Leader of Iran. First, he basically said that uh, the uh, previous uh, Supreme Leader had um, uh, issued a, a fatwa with regard to various, uh, uh, various subjects, that is, uh, the Supreme Leader uh, before Khamenei, who was uh, Ayatollah Khomeini, uh, had issued a number of fatwas, and that those fatwas were, uh, shall we say, uh, not very steady in their uh, in their presentation. They were all over the place. That they that he was uh, basically making judgments on the fly, uh, and in ways which did not uh, essentially uh, give much credibility to the whole process of, of issuing fatwas in the. Iranian regime. Um, and what I showed in my piece was that if you look at one of the cases which was cited, which was the case of uh, whether uh, sturgeon fish uh, are halal, meaning accepted, or haram, meaning forbidden in Islam. And uh, essentially, I linked to a, a case study that showed uh, that, in fact, uh, there were some technical issues surrounding sturgeon, which had to be sorted out, and that this did not prove his point at all. The second argument, which I think is more serious, uh, is that uh, the, the, the argument that was made by Glenn Kessler of the Washington Post is that essentially the uh, present Supreme Leader linked his anti-nuclear fatwa to a fatwa that had been issued by Ayatollah Khomeini uh, years ago about, uh, against chemical weapons. And what Kessler was saying was that, in fact, uh, the, the Iranians uh, had a chemical weapons program and actually produced chemical weapons during the Iran-Iraq war, and that that showed or proved that, in fact, uh, there was no credibility about the uh, fatwa issued against chemical weapons during the Iran-Iraq war by Ali uh, by Ayatollah Khomeini. So what I showed in my refutation was that, uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, the present Supreme Leader was not lying when he linked to his, his uh, anti-nuclear fatwa to the fatwa against chemical weapons, because it was not the case that the Iranians uh, admitted 
to having produced chemical weapons after the, the war, as Gwen Kessler argued, uh, asserted. And, and he made that argument again on the basis of being told that essentially by uh, pro-Israeli sources and uh, pro-Israeli source. Um, and he did not look at the original document, which was the Iranian presentation to the Chemical Weapons Convention in 1998. And I linked to that original document, and it showed that, in fact, Iran never admitted uh, that it produced chemical weapons. Quite the contrary, uh, the, the Iranian government said explicitly that they had prepared the capability uh, to produce those weapons, uh, i.e., they had uh, pr produced the, uh, the chemical agents, as they are called, but they never weaponized them, and that was quite explicit. So uh, essentially I showed that Kessler didn't do his homework. He did not check the facts, as he's supposed to do as a fact checker, um, and uh, that, that, in fact, his coverage of the issue was extremely slanted. Gareth, just uh, really quickly, did he actually offer up a correction? Well, that's interesting. Um, some days after my blog appeared uh, refuting his, his column, he did, in fact, have what he called an update of the original column. And it was online, of course, uh, and it was in the middle of the column. There was a, an update, one, one paragraph, a couple of sentences, which said, that I had refuted or I had uh, uh, answered his column and uh, suggested that it was wrong, uh, he said he admitted that he should have linked to the original document, as I mentioned, but he was a little bit vague about whether he had actually uh, misled uh, his readers in saying that the, the Iranians had never uh, admitted to having had uh, chemical weapons. And so... Uh, I'm afraid that uh, the overall effect of his update was to leave the issue a little bit fuzzy, and it was not really a very acceptable way of correcting his uh, very misleading column on the subject. All right, Gareth Porter, historian and, and investigative journalist, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks very much, Jessica. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.